Hey guys, today we're going to take a look at formulas. These are something that you should be familiar with. We've talked about them last year in math. Um, we used them towards the end of the year when we were doing geometry to find surface area, volume area, those things. Um, we've also used them a lot in science last year as well to calculate different things. So what is a formula? A formula is simply an equation or a rule uh, that shows a mathematical relationship between two or more quantities. Um, when we did science last year, we talked about the distance formula, the rate formula, speed formula, and you did some calculations with that. Um, the ones I want to look at today, specifically, we're going to look at um, the formulas for rectangles. We're going to look at area, volume, and perimeter. Those are some very common ones that, you, um, that you'll that you see and that you should know. Um, I have them written for you here. I'll pop them back up when we start and do our examples as well. Um, but you need to start learning your formulas. We talked about that last year. So what we have to do is find our missing values and formulas. What's going to happen here is instead of me giving you all of the dimensions of a rectangle and you finding the, the area or the perimeter um, or the volumes, if it's a, a rectangular prism, um, I'm going to give you the perimeter and you're going to be missing something there. So now we're going to have to use what we know about solving formulas to find our missing numbers. So both of these are dealing with perimeter. So that means I need my perimeter formula. And for a, rec uh, a rectangle, it's two times the length plus the width. Or two times the length plus two times the width if you want to use the distributive property, either of those will work. So what I do first to set it up is I plug my numbers in and then I go about solving it. So my perimeter is 44. So where I have a P, I'm going to plug that in. And I'm going to write this after having distributed it to help us solve it. Um, the length, I'm told, is 13. So I can plug that number in. And I don't know what the width is, so I'm just going to leave my variable as a W for the width. So what you'll notice now is we have something, and this actually looks very much like a two-step equation, which is exactly what it is. So it's just a little different. Rather than solving for the perimeter, we're going to undo our operations the way we did when we were talking about two-step equations to figure out what our missing uh, width is in this case. So the first thing I'm going to want to do, what I notice, is wherever you have numbers that you can multiply to reduce them or to simplify, you're going to want to do that first. So let's do this first. 2 times 13 gives me 26. Now I can go about uh, solving my equation. So you'll notice I'm adding and I'm also multiplying. So if you'll recall, when we're undoing our equations, we want to undo in our inverse order of operations. So the first thing I need to undo is my addition. How am I going to undo that? Well, I'm going to subtract 26 from both sides to keep it balanced. Over here, I'm left with 2 times W. When I do this subtraction, I'm left with 18. 2W, two, 2 times W is equal to 18, so how am I going to undo my multiplication? I'm going to undo it using division. I'm left with W on this side, 18 divided by 2 by, yeah, 2 is 9. Now, 9 is my answer, however, we're not done because 9 tells me nothing. Is it chickens? Is it cows? Is it hens? Is it feet? Is it miles? So look back up here, we're dealing with centimeters, so we need to make sure that we are labeling our answer. If we don't label the answer, it'll be marked wrong on quizzes and tests, but it's also good because we want to be specific. We want to know what we're talking about. Nine centimeters, not just nine. And then again, if you wanted, you could plug your nine in here, and you could do your operation to make sure that you get 44 to check your answer and make sure that you're right. All right, over here, we'll take a look at this one, and I'm going to erase my work so that we have some room to do this. Again, I'm given the perimeter, I'm given the width, it's the length I'm missing here. So let's plug what we know into our formula. I know that the perimeter is 28. I don't know what my length is, that I'm missing. I know that my width is 8. So we're going to plug those in first. Here we want to simplify this by multiplying those two numbers. I'm going to make this a capital L just so we don't confuse it as a 1. So again, remember, now we're undoing operations to solve our equations, so we need to undo them in our inverse order of operations. So the first thing I want to undo is my addition, and I'm going to use the inverse operation, meaning I'm going to subtract 16 from both sides. Over here, I'm just left with 2 times L, 
28 minus 16 leaves me with 12. Now, how am I going to undo my multiplication? I'm going to divide. So I'm left with L on this side. 12 divided by 2 gives me 6. Remember, we're not done. Look back. Here, our labels were inches. It's 16, 16, 6 inches. All right, so be, uh, be sure that you're keeping your labels in there um, as you go along. So that's a couple with perimeter. Now we're going to take a look at some that are area. So if you'll recall, our area of a rectangle is length times width. So this is going to be a little easier to solve, actually. These will be one-step equations um, to find our answers. So my area is length times width. So we're just going to plug in the letters that we have. I know that the area is 55. 55 cubic mil or cubic square millimeters. My length is 11 millimeters. And I don't know what my width is. So first thing we want to do, we want to write it out, plug in what we know, because then it's easier for us to see how we need to solve it. So always set it up this way. Plug in your numbers and look at it before you try to solve here, how am I going to get my variable by itself? Well, I need to use the inverse operation of multiplication, which is division. I'm left with W over here. 55 divided by 11 is 5, and we need to label it. We're dealing with millimeters. It is 5 millimeters wide. And again, we can go back and check by plugging it in. 5 times 11 gives me 55 millimeters squared. Over here, you'll notice we didn't draw a square. Sometimes um, I might just give you the letters here. It's still the same idea. So Area is equal to length times width. Let's plug in what we know. We know that the area is 42 square feet. I don't know what the length is, but I know that the width is 3 feet. Sorry, again, let's make that a capital L so we don't confuse it for a one. So I have 3 times L is equal to 42. So how am I going to get the L by itself? I'm going to use my inverse operation. Over here, I'm just left with length. 42 divided by 12 gives me 14. Make sure that we have our proper labels. This is in feet. So this would be a rectangle that is 14 feet by 3 feet would give me an area of 42 square feet. And again, go back, check your answers. All right, the last one we're going to look at is the volume. <clears throat> um, and we did talk about volume last year. So this would be not if we have a square or a rectangle, but this would be if we have a rectangular prism, a three-dimensional object. So what you'll notice here, um, this one, we actually are solving for the volume. So this one we're doing basically what we've done before um, last year when we looked at solving for volume. So volume is equal to length times width times height. So it's my volume that I'm missing over here. And I can plug my other numbers in. Uh, my length is 3, my width is 6, and my height is 9. So what you'll notice here is we don't really have to solve it. All we have to do is do our multiplication. Uh, 3 times 6 is 18. 18 times 9 is 162. Now remember, we're talking about volume. I have three different feet measures that I've multiplied. So my answer is 162 cubic feet. Make sure that we have our labels and that we have them labeled properly. All right, if you look at this one, this one here, I am going to have to solve for something else again. So we're going to want to plug our numbers in as we go. So volume is length times width times height. I'm given my volume, which is 216. I'm given my length, which is 3. I'm missing my width, and my height is 12. So what you'll notice is I'm multiplying three different numbers, and the associative property tells me it doesn't matter what order I multiply them in. So let's take our two constants and multiply them together to simplify. 12 times 3 gives me 36. So 36 times W gives us our 216 uh, cubic millimeters, which is our volume. Now all I have to do is undo my multiplication to solve for my width. So when I divide... 300, uh, 216 by 36, I get 6 maybe? Yes, I get 6 millimeters. 
Make sure that you remember your labels when you're done. Um, if you have any questions or if you're confused, please go back and watch the video. Um, you can post questions in the comments or on your online quizzes um, or just bring them to class with you. Have a great night and I will see you guys tomorrow.